I don't see anything in here about how to boot this thing up. Oh, how about that? It starts automatically. I have one question and one question only for you today. Should you shout out your hard earned money for a Bible software package? Every time I teach a seminary class, several of my students will ask me this question and each time I answer with yes. First, let's get the 800 pound gorilla out of the room. There are lots of free software apps to study the Bible, especially for smartphones. However, you get what you pay for. 99% of the resources that are on these free apps are either very out of date or of questionable quality. It's definitely a case of you get what you pay for. But if you're a serious student of the Bible or theology, involved in ministry, Bible college student or a seminary student, then you really need to give some very serious consideration to purchasing a good Bible software package. In this video, I'm only going to discuss the big three companies, Accordance, Logos, and Olive Tree. Each one has their own distinctive traits, but you're going to have to wait for the next video where I talk about that. If you do a search on YouTube for Bible software packages, you're going to see a lot of videos where someone touts that one is way better than the others. In reality, all three are excellent, and I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. You're watching the Caffeinated Bible. My name is David Paris, and for the past 20 or 30 years, I've been teaching seminary and graduate level courses in Bible and theology around the world and across the US. So if you like this channel, be sure to thumb up it, subscribe to the channel, that way YouTube will let you know when I post new videos, and finally, share it with other people. That's perhaps the biggest help that you can give me. Let me give you my reasons why I think you should buy and invest in some Bible software. Let's get the 800 pound gorilla out of the room first. Sticker shock. If you go to the sites for these software packages, you will quickly be hit by a severe case of sticker shock. Their packages vary from around $50 to well into the thousands of dollars. And what you need to realize is that they are basically selling books. And good reference books are expensive. For example, the 61 volume Word Biblical Commentary set published by Zondervan will run you $1,200 in the print version. Oftentimes you can get much cheaper through the software packages, sometimes on sale down to around 400 bucks. There's no getting around it. These Bible software packages can be expensive, but let's look at it another way. If you're in college, seminary, or university doing the degree, you pay a lot for those classes. Sometimes over a thousand dollars per class, depending where you're attending. And when you consider the entire price of your education, then the cost for one of these software packages seems like a pretty good deal. In fact, these software packages can be way less than what you spend on your smartphones, and you don't bat an eye at that expense. And finally, if you're patient, all three of these companies offer sales from the publishers, Black Friday sales and Christmas sales. And here's a free tip. If you're related to someone who is in seminary or ministry or just a theological geek, you might want to make this a great Christmas gift. That's just a free tip on my part. Value added to this channel. How about who should not buy Bible software? Yup, there are truly some people who I would not recommend buying one of these commercial packages. If you're not a tech type person, I would not recommend spending money on one of these packages. How do I reboot this thing again? If you're not willing to learn how to use the software, and they are powerful and require learning on how to use them, I would not recommend plunking down your money on one of these packages. You'll just end up being frustrated with your investment. If you don't spend the time studying or digging into biblical and theological topics, then this is just going to be a resource that's going to sit on your computer. Again, don't get it. If you're the type of person who is content being told what to believe and you don't dig into it yourself, you know, you show up for church or a study, you take it on, but then you don't dig into it anymore afterwards or ask questions. It might give you some street cred to show others what you have. It's not going to change your life and it's not going to help you learn. Again, don't buy the software. If you don't have the money right now, don't go into debt for one of these programs. It's okay, not everybody has money available. 
My wife and I spent the early part of our adult lives involved in church or nonprofit work, and money was always tight. So I totally get it. In this case, go with one of the free packages instead. Here are my top reasons why you should invest in a good Bible software package. First off, ease of use or speed. When I went to seminary in the last century, if you wanted to look up a word or a passage or a map or whatever, you had to find the right resource. Look it up, see if you can find the passage. See if it contains the word or a map that's gonna help you understand your passage. Then you have to put all your notes into a notepad and take it back to your computer and work on it. With the software, I can quickly go to the passage, see what resources I have on that material on my laptop or my computer, open a couple of them, look at pictures, maps, etc. Yup, no need to even get up from my desk any longer, except maybe to refill my coffee. Portability. We all know about this, but we don't think about it enough. Accords, Logos, and Ovaltree all run on desktops, laptops, tablets, and smartphones. This means that you have a library in your hands at all times. I've had the opportunity to teach around the world and the ability to bring an extensive biblical theological library with me on my tablet is invaluable. While listening to a sermon or someone teach, you can sit there in the pew and look up the passage to see what they're teaching about. You can quickly see how that passage is translated in different versions, see if the point they're making about a word is accurate or not, or just go down a rabbit hole or two. This is really a transformational approach to studying the Bible since the iPhone was first launched. Availability. These resources are available on the internet through these software companies. In a recent class, I had students spread across the United States and Canada, Korea, Japan, Australia, Thailand, the Middle East, and Europe. One of the questions I have to keep in mind when I prepare classes and develop a syllabus is, are these books available online in Fuller's Library or as a Kindle type book so that they can access them wherever they are? The ability to access electronic editions of book is huge and is transforming education and the access to information. You can quickly and easily add more books to your software package at the drop of a hat and a ding on your credit card at the same time. In the past, you would need to be near a good library with a large biblical study section. This shut many out from doing in-depth types of studies. Location is no longer an issue. Quality of resources. This is where you get what you pay for. These are professional, commercial grade Bible software packages and they are worth the money. If you want good quality, well-researched biblical and theological resources, it costs money. And the flip side of that is that they are commercial packages, so they have contracts with the best publishers to provide you with the most up-to-date resources. Let me give you an example. You'll often see Matthew Henry's commentary available online or in one of the free software packages, and you'll see them in the commercial ones as well. Matthew Henry's commentary is five very thick volumes and it covers the entire Bible. It's an impressive looking resource until you scratch just a little bit below the surface and you notice that it was originally published between 1706 and 1710. Most of it was written during the 1600s. It's great for seeing how they interpreted the Bible before the United States was even a country. Now, I don't know about you, but a scholarly resource that was written over 300 years ago is not what I would call cutting edge or up to date. It's just a simple fact of copyright law and how publishers are able to make money and stay in business. The most recent research and publications cost money for those companies to publish, advertise, and then digitize for the software companies. And by spending money on them, you're helping these authors, researchers, publishers, and software companies make a living and contribute to the overall health of the church. And a word of warning here, all three of these software companies also pad their collections with older public domain works, Matthew Henry, for example. So check the publication date they'll have it in their software for these resources to make sure you're not selling for a used piece of string. Homework. 
all three of these software companies offer free versions or trial versions of their software. And I'll have links to all three companies under this video. But don't take my word for it. Download one of their free versions or trial versions and give it a test drive. See what you think. Don't buy one yet. Just check them out. In the next video, we'll look at which package you might want to consider getting between Accordance, Logos, or Olive Tree, and what level within that company you might want to spend. You know, how much money do you want to spend on from free to outrageous? I'll leave you with that for this week. Until we meet again, I will leave you with the word of peace and do your homework. Check out these software packages. Peace. While I work on my masterpiece, you can check out a video that YouTube recommends for my channel down here below. Oh yeah, I'm cooking with fire now.